Hello, I'm Shannon Tiezzi with The Diplomat, and I'm here today at the American Enterprise Institute, where I'm happy to be joined by Sadan Ndume. He is a resident fellow here at AEI and also a columnist for The Wall Street Journal. Thank you so much for joining us. It's great to be here. He's going to be talking with me about uh, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's recent visit to East Asia, especially his stop in China. So let's jump right in. What did you think was the most important aspect of Modi's visit to China? I think the visit to China really uh, gives us a glimpse of uh, how Modi is going to approach India's most important neighbor. And it has two elements that stood out for me. The first is a certain frankness in how he addresses the Chinese. He's not cringing and he's not uh, diffident like many of his predecessors have been. The second is an emphasis on cooperation. I think there's a realization in this administration that uh, it's foolish to expect very dramatic change or dramatic breakthroughs uh, in complicated issues such as the boundary, uh, which is disputed between the two countries. So they are focusing instead on small practical wins that would deepen ties between the two countries. And I suspect that that will be a larger theme in India-China relations that runs through the Modi administration. And comparing Modi's visit to China with Xi Jinping's visit to India last year, was there anything you saw that was different um, or was there mostly continuity in how these two countries are approaching each other? So there were similarities and differences. Um, obviously, the, at, at, at a policy level, the uh, most obvious similarities are that, you know, Indian India's China policy has a great degree of continuity across governments, and similarly, China's India policy does too. Uh, in terms of personal touches also, there were interesting similarities, where Narendra Modi went back to his home state to, to, to welcome Xi Jinping, and then Xi Jinping in turn welcomed Modi in Xi'an. Uh, the two leaders also seem to have placed a certain amount of emphasis in developing a personal relationship and letting it be known that they have developed a personal relationship, that they've spent time together. So in terms of uh, you know, the photo ops and the atmospherics, uh, they were similar. The one striking difference is that you really didn't have a mood spoiler the way you did when Xi Jinping visited India, and you had these incursions by Chinese troops across the line of actual control. Uh, the Indian media naturally reacted very strongly, and that really put a damper uh, on the uh, larger talks and some of the commercial agreements that had been raised. So here, this went up, relatively speaking, without hiccups. And so in that sense, it was a different visit in terms of tone and tenor. And Modi has been placing more of an emphasis on how to handle this border issue, as you mentioned earlier. Do you think that helped make a difference in terms of us not seeing what had kind of become a pattern of these border incursions during high-level visits? Yeah, so, you know, it's not as though the pattern is, you know, the, the, the border itself is disputed. The Chinese and the Indians don't decide, don't agree on, on where it lies. But uh, I think it's fair to say that the incursions or the problems about the incursions have grown mostly out of increasing Chinese assertiveness. So it's not as though Modi was in a position to, you know, was, was, was asking, you know, the Indian side to go slow. I think that res the restraint that we're talking about is from the Chinese side, and I think they recognize that it would be counterproductive for them to uh, engage in the kind of provo uh, provocation that they had uh, done when uh, Xi Jinping had visited India. And obviously the border issue is not going anywhere anytime soon, but Modi has been pushing to try and clarify where the line of actual control is. Uh, so do you think we'll see any progress on that? So I, I, that's, a, that's a good question, and I don't have the answer. I think what you're going to see is management of the issue. Uh, I personally do not think that this complicated issue, which is left over from history, is about to be resolved very soon. Uh, I don't think that either country or either leader really has the kind of ca political capital or political will needed to make uh, a tough deal and sell it to their own public. Uh, from Modi's perspective, I think it's better for him. He wants this problem not to erupt. Uh, he wants it to be looked at, of course, but what he seems to be aiming for is to deepen ties, to build more uh, Indian equities in China, to shore up India's strength through partnerships with countries like the US and Japan, 
and approach this issue from a position of strength because right now, relatively speaking, India is not in a position of strength. So we've been hearing, uh, at least in the media narratives, about growing competition or even rivalry between China and India, uh, particularly in the Indian Ocean region. When Modi was visiting neighboring Southeast Asian states, it's often portrayed as India's attempt to win these states back from China's growing influence. Were these sort of concerns at all on play during this visit, or were they kind of papered over for, in favor of a spirit of cooperation? You know, they're always part of the backdrop. They're always part of the subtext, right? So for instance, it's no coincidence that Modi chose to visit Mongolia and, and speak about Buddhism and democracy over there, right? So it's almost like, you know, Modi doing uh, with, to China what China did with India when Xi Jinping decided to go to Sri Lanka uh, at the same time as his visit to India. So there's, there's always a certain amount of competition. Uh, I don't think that uh, that is going to go away. But at the same time, both countries have shown themselves to be mature enough to handle both cooperation and competition at the same time. And they've been particularly trying to grow this economic relationship. Both sides see it as having a lot of potential, but there are concerns particularly on the Indian side about it being an unequal relationship with a massive trade deficit. How successful can they be at getting those concerns addressed in the China relationship? Well, that, that's, that's exactly it. I think you've summed it up very nicely. Uh, if you look at the trade relationship purely in terms of size, uh, I think that in fact the, India and China have done well. Uh, by some measures, at one point, uh, China had overtaken the United States as India's largest trade partner looked at purely in terms of goods. I'm not sure if that's still the case this year, but that was the case last year. Uh, in terms of goods and services, of course, the U.S. remains India's largest trade partner. But the nature of India-China's trade, as you say, is very lopsided. And one thing that would be important for the Modi government is to make it less, less lopsided. Uh, there are Indian firms, for instance, in information technology, pharmaceuticals, uh, that feel that they are globally competitive. They do well in markets everywhere else, but they haven't really been able to make a mark in the Chinese market. And there's a strong sense among these firms that that's because the Chinese have not given, have not been fair to them, have not given them a level play, playing field. So it's certainly uh, an effort of the Modi government to, to fix that. Uh, but as you know, China is, is, is not the world's easiest place to do business, so we'll have to really see uh, how the landscape looks in a few years to see whether they have been uh, successful in that effort. And China, meanwhile, has been investing a lot uh, elsewhere in Asia as part of its Silk Road economic belt and maritime Silk Road projects. Is there any excitement in India about taking advantage of that incoming investment? I think there's ambivalence. I think that, uh, you know, as with many countries, uh, India has a somewhat ambivalent uh, response to uh, China's rising economic might. Uh, on the one hand, China is definitely seen as a potential source of investment. And on this front, uh, the Modi government has, def has, has clearly decided that it's going to reach out and it's not going to allow security concerns to put too much of a damper on deeper business relationships, uh, including Chinese, uh, Chinese investment in India. So in that sense, there, there is definitely an opportunity. India needs uh, vast amounts of infrastructure spending. Uh, the Chinese have the capital, and they also have the expertise. But on the other hand, there is a security dimension to China's great infrastructure drive uh, across Asia. And so this is something that is not seen by India as an unalloyed blessing. And last month, President Xi Jinping was in Pakistan, where he promised a large amount of uh, investment in Pakistan, including in Pakistan-controlled Kashmir, uh, which sort of cast a pall over Modi's visit. Was that a serious issue that was under discussion during Modi's time in China? It was an issue, and it was something that the Prime Minister was quite frank about. Uh, and this is not something that this government has been shy about. Uh, uh, what, uh, what you call Pakistan, uh, you know, uh, pa Pakistan administered Kashmir you know, is regarded by India and by India's parliament as, a, in fact, a sovereign part of Indian territory. And so that is, that is tricky. But beyond that, you know, the Chinese relationship with Pakistan 
though not alluded to directly, was, was certainly alluded to implicitly. Uh, there, are, uh, there, there are very serious reservations in India about China's role in propping up Pakistan and allowing Pakistan to, for instance, propagate terrorism in the neighborhood. And this government in, in New Delhi is not shy about speaking about these things. But at the same time, there's hope for um, cooperation between China and India to fight terrorism, for instance, in Afghanistan um, as the US, U.S. withdraws. Do you think we could see actual cooperation there? I'm not particularly hopeful about India and China combating terrorism together in Afghanistan. Uh, I think that the Chinese certainly are showing more interest in that, in, in, in playing a role in Afghanistan than they have in the past. But it seems unlikely to me that their pre-existing relationship with Pakistan is going to be eclipsed uh, by, this, by these new concerns. Well, thank you so much for joining us and talking India-China relations. Thanks for having me. And thanks for tuning in. Once again, I'm Shannon Tiazi from The Diplomat.